nagsisinungaling siya. When Ben Herluy and other witnesses blew whistle against Janet Lynn Napolis and other high-ranking state officials about the multi-billion peso pork barrel scam, coaching issue came out saying that the Department of Justice is trying to teach what the witnesses have to say. Yung mga impormasyon na nagagaling sa whistleblowers at nabavalidate, nabeverify sa paper trail. Different versions of the list, those involved in the systematic pork barrel scam, also came out prompting allegations that a powerful hand tries to control the admitted facts. This led to some watchdogs to question the credibility and partiality of the Justice Department headed by Laila de Lima in handling the whistleblowers. Allegedly, Malacanang shows a strong interest in the case, where its allies are also implicated. Current Deputy Speaker Sergio Apostol worries that since the DOJ is under the executive branch of the government and currently holds the sole prerogative in WPP applications, he said it is necessary to shield WPP from possible corrosive politics. He calls to depoliticize WPP and warned of a possible witness intimidation and suppression which could lead to failed prosecution. The Witness Protection Program, or WPP, is established under Republic Act No. 6981, which seeks to encourage a person to be a witness by protecting him or her from harm, reprisal, or displacement. Other benefits of the program include security services, immunity from liability, housing, livelihood assistance, free medical treatment, free education for dependents, and a burial benefit of 10,000 pesos if killed due to participation in the program. But Justice Secretary Laila de Lima reduced Apostol's arguments to laughing matter saying that prosecution is an executive function, that the author has started off from a wrong premise, and that the allegations are sweeping and reckless. Welcome to Opposing Views, a hard, straightforward discussion of today's most pressing issues. When United Nations Human Rights Council Special Rapporteur Philip Alston visited the Philippines in 2008, he noticed that the Justice Department's witness protection program needs to be reformed and fully implemented. We'll weigh in tonight after several years if these have been achieved. Our question for tonight, should the DOJ or the Department of Justice have the sole power in determining qualified applicants for the witness protection program? Good evening, I'm Rod Depomoseno and this is Opposing Views. All right, joining us tonight is Attorney Edward Chico, a law professor from the De La Salle University and a columnist for the Manila Times. Attorney Ed, good evening. Uh, good evening, Rod. Yeah, uh, give us a, a quick summary of your position here. Uh, should the DOJ have the sole uh, authority in uh, managing the WPP or Witness Protection Program? Well, Rod, let me put it this way. The DOJ is designed, created precisely to prosecute criminal cases. Mm -hmm. And being the only agency designated to do that, I think the DOJ has the capacity, has the capability to, number one, determine the possible witnesses it may present and to even determine the pieces of evidence it may offer before the court. So at the end of the day, only the DOJ can do that. And I could not understand how another agency that has nothing to do with prosecution would have the capacity uh, to do the same. All right. Thank you, Attorney Ed. Now, on the opposing side is Attorney Melchor Magdamo, one of the witnesses under the Witness Protection Program and the Secretary of the Whistleblowers Association of the Philippines. Uh, Mel, good evening. Good evening, Rod. All right. Uh, give us your two cents worth on, uh, on this uh, debate question. You think the DOJ uh, shouldn't be the only one who has the sole prerogative or sole authority? No, it should not be a monopoly of DOJ. For one, in the Constitution itself, uh, grants other agencies with uh, that prerogative. Mm -hmm. The WPP involves immunities, mm -hmm. involves the processing of immunities. And only one agency was mentioned in the Constitution that can process immunity, and it is the Commission on Human Rights. Mm -hmm. So that alone, that already gives another agency, in addition to DOJ, with, with a legal mm -hmm. prerogative. And then the others, the ombudsman, the public attorney's office, they have their own mini WPP, and it's working. So why abolish them? All right. Okay. So let's start now. Let's start off with this uh, question. Um, 
Your comments first, uh, gentlemen. I'll start uh, with you, Attorney Ed. Uh, on the need, the need to reform the WPP, the Witness Protection Program, and, and if you feel that the current Witness Protection Program is being properly handled. Well, if you ask me, there are certain problem areas, but those problem areas definitely have nothing to do with the DOJ mm -hmm. as, an as an institution. For okay, example, what are those problem areas? Uh, there are several factors we can mm. cite. Number one is the seeming uh, weak support system. Mm -hmm. In, in, the, in, in the present setup mm -hmm. that definitely discourages witnesses to come out and testify. Mm -hmm. And part of the problem, I guess, is the lack of, the apparent lack of sufficient budget mm -hmm. allocated for the which, WPP. Which is usually the problem. Well, definitely that's yeah. a problem. In yeah. fact, in 1991, when the law was enacted, only 10 million was appropriated every year. But mm -hmm. right now, if I'm not mistaken, this year, it's almost 200 million, but definitely the amount is still um, way insufficient to mm -hmm. answer for the needs in the program. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Number two, the seeming lack of interim uh, protection mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, because right now, the DOJ has the tendency to basically uh, provide protection the moment the application is granted. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, in the process of uh, determining whether or not the application should be granted, the witness is not given protection, and that is really a problem. Mm -hmm. So the there's, other, a, there's a gap there's, there. Exactly, there's a gap, a gap there. Oh. And the other problem I can think of, and, and I'm pretty sure everyone knows this, the, the, the purpose of the witness protection program is basically to guarantee the safety of the witnesses. Mm -hmm. But right now, the identity of witnesses is something that is um, you know, always violated. Mm -hmm. You know, people, whether from the government or even from the private sector, would always disclose the identity of certain witnesses. And this is, of course, a problem, one that would discourage witnesses to actually come out. Especially so, with social media. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and it, 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 as you can see, Rod, these are problem areas that should be addressed. Mm -hmm. But if they would be critically addressed, then I think the DOJ would be able to um, more or less uh, implement properly, administer properly the mm -hmm. WPP. All right. Uh, Mel, uh, your comments man, on, on, on the need to reform the WPP and, and if you feel that the witness protection program is being handled properly. Well, you've been under it, right? Or you've tried to, to apply for it? Actually, I was in the process of entering the WPP. I back out after I noticed so many okay. political uh, undertones. Okay. So, so uh. tell us uh, your thoughts on, on, the, on the program and the need for for it to be reformed. The reason why it's politicized is even in, in its history, when it was still being formulated, it was already very political. At that time, way back 1991, it was being uh, discussed in the Congress 1990. The object there was uh, because there were the government of Corazon Aquino at that time was in, in the center with the left and the right mm -hmm. struggling. And there are those among the leftists who wanted to come back to the government. Okay. And there are also um, from the rightists who wanted also to, to surrender to, the, to yeah. normal lives. Yeah. And they're the ones being protected. The ones who, who, who from the extreme left and extreme right, they so, join the center. So in a way, it's political. It uh, was already political uh, from the very start. So that, that's where you saw the problem mm -hmm. was. Because this was enacted in what, 1991? 1991. Right? Okay. So this was after, uh, was enacted during the time? Uh, yeah, from it started around 1990, even uh, yeah. as early as 1989, it was it was already being enacted. Uh, Correct. Being, it was uh, during that administra uh, administration. Yes. Do, you, do you think that, that that political nature of the WPP continued on uh, after Corey's time? After 23 years, now it's uh, it's still uh, it's, it's still it's, uh, it's so you feel that that's a problem. It's embedded into the si system. Of but the maybe it's just by government. practice, or or does the law provide that? that maybe it's just the the way traditionally it's being. Uh, Implemented, but maybe the law itself is 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 fine. The law it's uh, no no it, it, the way the law is made is worded, it, it, it yeah. was already the, the political undertones is just being hidden, just being suppressed. But it's already there. Mm. It, it could have been done differently. It, it could, there there could have been expressed provisions that this must be non-political. All right. So perhaps the, the the political aspect of it is uh, due to the fact that it's the DOJ. You know? The DOJ obviously is under the office of the president. It's under the executive branch, mm. and so. There is a perception, and I'll, I'll address this to both of you, uh, the, the DOJ lacks uh, independence and credibility in, especially when it comes to highly political cases involving the government. Like, you know, we've seen recently, there have been a lot of, um, well, whistleblowers uh, whose testimony is against this government. And then if you're, you're in a situation now 
where you're a witness against the government, you're going to a government agency or a government department asking for protection. So what are your <laughs> thoughts on that, uh, Ed? Well, let me just point out, Rod, that mm. just because the Department mm. of Justice is under the direct control and supervision of, mm. you know, we would say Malacanang, mm. does not necessarily mean, of course, that the DOJ should be subservient to the president. Mm. The law is not designed that way. So I beg to disagree. It's not like mm. there is some hidden agenda when the law was crafted. The law is very, very specific in designating the DOJ as the sole agency having the responsibility over the administration. So you don't think the, the, pa WPP. the palace has anything, any kind of influence on the DOJ, for example, influencing the WPP? Let, let's put it this way, Rod. The law is not designed that way. In the hands of a good president, in the hands of a president who upholds the rule of law, there should not be anything wrong. For example, there are cases of alleged wrongdoings perpetrated by the president himself or any of his cabinet men or any people who belong to the administration uh, or to the uh, executive uh, department. Uh, if, if the president is, is okay, if the president thinks about the welfare of the people, then there would not have been anything wrong. Definitely, the president is not expected to intervene, meddle, or even influence the DOJ. But the problem is, if in the hands of a president... That's, that's not good. Exactly, who blatantly disregards the rule of law, a president who would like to have his way, a president who would always want to protect the interest of his department, the interest of his people, mm. I mean, mm. of his own men, mm. then definitely that would be problematic. So the point is, the problem is the kind, the problem is with the leadership, not with the not institution. Not so much with the system. Okay. Yes, not exactly, not with the DOJ. If you transfer, for example, mm. the responsibility from the DOJ to the CHR, what is the guarantee that the CHR would have the credibility, would have the independence needed to fully effectively implement the law? Because if the president would want to have his way, definitely he could do that. Let's all be honest about it. Let's get real. The president is the most powerful man in the country. And although we recognize the separation of powers amongst the three branches, the president can always find ways. Remember, I'm so sorry, I have to speak yeah. fast. Yeah. Uh, remember, during the impeachment trial of Corona, allegedly the president, wanting the senators to vote for the impeachment, allegedly gave out 50 million each to each senator. So. Ideally, the senator should be acting independently, but the president being the most powerful man in the country can influence. Yes, exactly, can influence. To. But again, ultimately, it's not the problem of the DOJ. It's the problem of the leadership, the kind of leaders we elect, uh, by yeah. the way. All right, I, I need to interrupt you uh, at this point, uh, Attorney Ed. I'll allow you a rejoinder, Amel, when we, when we come back. All right, so we'll be, be back after a short break. Meanwhile, you can uh, react online via Facebook at facebook.com slash solar opposing views or tweet your comments at opposing underscore views. Use the hashtag OVWPP. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views on the Solar News Channel. We have with us Attorney Edward Chico and Attorney Melchor Magdamo. And our debate question for tonight, should the Department of Justice have the sole power in determining qualified applicants for the Witness Protection Program? Now, just before we took a break, uh, Attorney Ed was making a point that structurally, the, uh, the DOJ and, uh, can be the sole um, authority you know, in determining those who will be under the WPP. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with it, even if technically the DOJ or the Sec Secretary of Justice is under the president, if you have a good president. You, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the point of uh, Attorney Ed. Yes. Uh, if you have a good president, structurally or in terms of organization mm -hmm. or system, it should be all right. Do you have a problem with that, uh, Mel, uh, with that structure? The first word is if. Okay. You have a good president. The, the Unfortunately, word, no? we don't yeah. have a good president. He keeps on interfering with the processes of the DOJ. Okay. That's why even Laila de Lima, who I vouched for when she was still competing with Nonong Cruz for that position of uh, DOJ secretary, mm -hmm. believe na believe kami kay Laila at that time. Now, what happened to Laila now? Because if we have a good president, perhaps our DOJ secretary would have done a better job. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as, as uh, Attorney Ed Chico said, that's so definitely, a, your, your position in this case, the uh, palace is 
definitely influencing the WPP. Yes, and yeah. there's that portion in Republic Act 6981 wherein the witness must sign a MOA memorandum of agreement. That is where the dictations come in, in, in the wordings of the MOA. Even if it's not in the law, the way the, way the MOA is worded, that's where the So do you feel that dictations. there's in this, uh, a lot of the cases that we're seeing now uh, being filed, no? and mm -hmm. a lot of witnesses coming out, whistleblowers, do you think mm -hmm. there's intimidation and suppression uh, uh, happening according to uh, uh, Congressman Apostol? Yes, for example, Ben Hur and Merlina Sunas and the other whistleblowers in this uh, scam, no? mm -hmm. this uh, PDAF scam, they, they are pointing not only to three persons but to so very many, many practically 200 if, if, you go, if you go by the evidence of Ben Hur. And yet, what happened? The, the target is only three. Tanda mm -hmm. Pogi Sexy. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Attorney Ed, uh, yes, did you want to Well, I just something? want to say that if we couldn't have a good precedent, then mm -hmm. that's precisely the point. Why transfer it to another agency? Mm -hmm. It will be pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. As I said, the president is the most powerful mm -hmm. man in the country, and definitely mm -hmm. he can have his way. He can whether basically the, go things to interest. Whether it's the GHR or, or, or the mm -hmm. DOJ, definitely mm -hmm. we can see some unseen hands mm -hmm. manipulating the process. But let's say the public attorney's office, where would that fall under? But the problem is the public attorney's office because they are um, they are not part of the prosecution. Eh? They are more uh, they are actually for the defense. Yeah, for the defense. The, yeah. the, 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 the DOJ represents the state because when you commit a crime, a crime, you basically commit an offense against the state, and the state is represented by the DOJ. And when you talk of prosecution, definitely the DOJ should closely work with the possible witnesses, mm -hmm. whether they be state witnesses, whether they be um, ordinary witnesses that like to avail of the mm -hmm. WPP. But the suggestion also includes the ombudsman, is that correct? The ombudsman, for example? Yes, because yes. they have their own mini WPP, including the CHR. They have their own mini WPP, mm -hmm. and according to them, it's working. And uh, why abolish them and why yeah. lock the box? Huh. Well, I really, I really do not have any problem with that. Even in the U.S., for example, um, if, uh, for example, the, Depart the U.S. Department of Justice is responsible for the mm -hmm. witness protection program in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But since there are certain cases which, for example, the, uh, the U.S. Department of Justice could not take cognizance of, or even if the U.S. Department of Justice could actually take cognizance of those cases, would not have time to actually uh, deal with them, uh, states, for example, have their respective uh, laws on witness protection program. That's, so, that's not covered by the DOJ. Uh, yeah. They're the only department. Yeah, yes, of yes. All right. Probably no. we can do something here, but mm. to transfer the authority, but to deprive the DOJ mm -hmm. of the power to determine uh, or to administer the the, the WPP definitely will you're not, you're not raise the, more problems. All right. Now, do you agree with the? Do you agree with the Deputy Speaker Apostol's bill calling for the depolitization? Uh, to de depoliticize the WPP and, and shield it from, uh, shield the WPP you know, from corrosive politics. Do you, do you uh, agree with that? Well, of course, I agree with Sir Chapostol, but the problem is his bill would like to uh, transfer the authority from the DOJ to ordinary local courts. And that would raise some problems because courts are supposed to settle justiciable controversy. Mm. They are supposed to yeah. settle disputes. Therefore, the courts are expected to always be impartial and mm. they're expected to always be objective. Mm. So it just doesn't make sense if the, the courts would be the ones determining who would be the witnesses under the WPP. Because if that is the case, it's as if the courts are being made as, as part of the prosecution, mm. as if it's an arm now of the DOJ. So it just wouldn't make sense. And there will always be this perceived notion that if the courts will do that, the, the courts are basically siding with the prosecution and, and, and definitely uh, not siding with defense. Yeah. What do you say about that, uh, Mel? And if kung ang the courts, naman, if, if it will be the courts uh, selecting, if the it DOJ, will also be a conflict of interest. If the DOJ can claim to be neutral, the courts can also claim to be neutral. Uh, mm. the, it's just a matter of uh, actual implementation, case-to-case eh, -case basis. Because sometimes... The, the witness do not trust the DOJ. They prefer to go to the judge. The judge will not just, cannot just throw away a, a witness like that. It's case-to-case -case basis. It depends on uh, if there's a judge who's willing to, or a court who's willing to um, accommodate uh, a witness. You know, or sometimes it's a life and death situation, even temporarily. Oh. Well, no, in, in your, yes. I don't want to contrary to Mel. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we used to be band miss parang kuya ko yan. <laughs> okay. he, he was our keyboard. Maybe yeah. after this we can uh, jam. Back in the day probably. Mm -hmm. ang, ang, ang point ko lang kasi Mel, ganito eh. Ang problema kasi natin, ang DOJ ang may karapatan 
na they, 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 should, they should take care of prosecution to begin with. The court is supposed to serve as a judge. Mm. So how can a court uh, do that if the court would, you know, would, 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 would be partial? Because if the court would, for example, determine the qualifications of the witnesses, then the court will also be compelled to get their respected testimonies. Yeah, okay. And these testimonies, once given definitely, will, 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 will exactly. already... Uh, Show a little bias, I guess. Yes, or, exactly. Uh, and, and the court may not be able to fulfill its mandate of settling justiciable controversy, of being impartial and being objective. No. Tony, I, I, I was going to ask the same question I asked uh, Mel earlier. Do you think that there's, there is intimidation and suppression? Uh, do you agree with that, uh, that the president, for example, has a hand in, in influencing what's going on in the, the latest uh, whistleblower uh, cases? No? Um, do you feel that... the at, at least, do you, do you have a sense that perhaps uh -huh. the, the president of the palace is, uh, is doing some intimidation and suppression activities? Well, let me put it this way. I do not have any personal knowledge um, with regard to that. But, you know, you can sense that definitely there is some unseen hands manipulating the process here. But that is expected. You know, our, you know everything in this country is politically motivated. So we should expect that. So we that. can't remove that. Yes, we, we can't get... remove that. The problem is we're zeroing in, we're ganging up against the DOJ as if the DOJ is the end all and be all of this problem. It's mm. not. There is nothing wrong with the DOJ. There's something wrong with the leadership and that should be addressed. Like in the case, uh, Mel, uh, you were a witness for some Comelec yes. uh, anomalies, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, and so therefore, and, and you, your position is that uh, a body like the Comelec should also be able to, to uh, I guess, go through the same witness protection program or have its own witness protection program, right? By law, there is a law uh, allowing, uh, granting to Comelec similar powers, uh, Republic Act uh, 66 uh, mm -hmm. and Republic Act 6686 okay. or mm -hmm. for Yeah, at least we know there's a Republic yes. Act. And you feel that in those scenarios, mm -hmm. it must appropriate that it's the Comelec who should be managing the witness protection program. But that's only for election cases. Yes, correct. Exclusively for election cases. Mm. So yeah. do you at least agree, uh, Attorney Ed, that uh, in certain cases it won't be, because you mentioned earlier, you can consider that in the U.S., for example, there are some uh, cases where the, the Department of Justice gives in to, uh, to other bodies to, to manage the witness protection program. Is that correct? Uh, um, you see, yes, you see in some cases? Uh, the, the point is, ultimately, the DOJ should take center stage, so mm -hmm. to speak, because mm -hmm. the DOJ has the, you that's know, the is in charge with prosecution mm -hmm. of cases. Mm -hmm. So the DOJ should know its witnesses. All right. The DOJ should be able to coordinate with them. Mm -hmm. and, that's just, and that is my point. All right. All right. We need to take a short break. More on the issue of the Witness Protection Program when we come back. You're watching Opposing Views. Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views on the Solar News Channel. I'm Rod Nepomuceno. Still with us, Attorney Edward Chico and Attorney uh, Melchor Magdamo. And our question, should the Department of Justice have the sole power in determining qualified applicants uh, for the Witness Protection Program? All right. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about the benefits. No? I mean, I guess the, the current implementation of the program. Uh, are we giving, do you feel we're giving the right benefits to the right whistleblowers uh, currently, uh, Ed? Well, there is an ability on the part of the government mm -hmm. to provide for the necessary benefits under the law. Mm -hmm. And mainly because mm -hmm. of the relatively small budget allocated for the WPP. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if the government is really serious mm -hmm. in providing for these benefits, then probably it's, it's, it's high time that uh, they should significantly increase mm -hmm. the budget allocated for the program. And I'm pretty sure Mel would... Not disagree with me. Mm. Uh, now, because each whistleblower, I think, receives twelve thousand per month at least. I think, I, I think, uh, Mel will <laughs> confirm it, uh, concur actually, with this. Actually, malaki na ngayon, Mel, di ba? Yeah. I just what, what received that. This, Mel? I received that information only yesterday after I was called mm. by mm. the researchers. I con okay. I tried to call some of the uh, previous whistleblowers who were true, earning. Though. Yes. It's twelve thousand. Okay. It's twelve. Do you think that's uh, sufficient at least to to live by? I mean, twelve thousand is uh, well uh, below probably below minimum wage or just about there. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, maybe if, 
compare with the other whistleblowers, like for example, uh, Ruby Tuason. Correct. You take away budget from her and give it to the others, let her share her lion's share in the budget. Mm -hmm. with the ordinary witnesses. Then maybe the ordinary witnesses will, yeah. will not complain. Uh, let's talk about that. Why is there such a disparity, you think, Attorney Ed? Uh, why do you think there's well, a disparity I, between... Well, I really don't know that the OJ is not supposed to be doing that. Uh -huh. uh, but, but that exactly is the problem of the, of, of the uh, certain provisions in the law mm -hmm. which should be amended. Mm -hmm. um, because there is really no specific provisions as regards how the benefit should be given to the uh, whistleblowers or to state witnesses. Mm -hmm. So there has to be clear-cut clear -cut guidelines mm -hmm. as to how this benefit should be accorded to them mm -hmm. so that the DOJ would not have unbridled exercise of discretion mm -hmm. as regards how, to, how much should be given uh, to the witnesses. Right. Uh -oh. So in a way, again, it's, it's at least your position is that the OJ plan, it's just maybe, maybe from a budgetary standpoint, exactly. it's, it's still, it's still, uh, it's tough. Exactly, it's tough to because be. if you allow the CHR, for example, to be responsible for the WPP mm -hmm. with a measly sum given to them, mm -hmm. then I doubt if they'd be able to also has to be a uh, department, uh, provide uh, at the least same. Department yeah, yes, yes, level. exactly. All right, uh, let's talk about the efficiency of uh, applying uh, for the WPP program. Now, you, you were part of that, you applied, right? Uh, maybe you can tell us, uh, let us go through the process, uh, Mel, on, uh, on how you went about applying for the WPP and, and, and whether you feel that, uh, although I, can, I guess I know <laughs> what your answer will be, uh, what you feel about the efficiency or lack of, of the uh, application, for the application uh, process for the WPP. Well, it was very bureaucratic. And mm -hmm. after a long, long process, I realized I'm being lumped together with the murderers in the Maguindanao massacre, mm -hmm. who maybe they will just parade me together with an entirely different case mm -hmm. so, that, so that to give credibility to the other dubious witnesses. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the reason why I back out. Yeah, so, so when you say bureaucratic, I mean, describe it. Describe the process, a lot of documentation. and Because, uh -huh. I, I, again, going to the witness protection program, you mm -hmm. want your family to be protected. Yes. You want to make sure that you're not demoted from your job yes. because it's part of the law and then you, you want to be secured, your, yes. your, your, your life, not just you and your entire family. So what did you have to go through and uh, w tell us a little bit more about the, those inefficiencies. Usually the earliest stage of a witness mm. or a whistleblower, usually security is the prime consideration. Mm. So because of that bureaucracy, it's very possible that during the application process, the witness is already dead. Mm. So the, the, uh, the, the witness cannot just be falling in line like a, the usual standard bureaucracy because the assassin could be, just be waiting right there at the entrance of the DOJ. Mm, there has to be a sense of urgency. I mean, yes. In other words, they're, they're treating it like a usual court case. Na medyo mabagal, no? <laughs> now, Tony uh, Ed, yung, uh, you know, the case of Jun Lusada, for example, no? he, had, he had to surrender to the church um, in order to, uh, I guess, be a witness. Di ba? Kasi I guess he, he didn't have full confidence on the... WPP program. Uh, do you think that this is because of just the system or is it the DOJ's fault? In that well, of course, it's not the DOJ's fault. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if Mel would say that it is highly bureaucratic, mm -hmm. I'd like to pose this question. Can you think of an agency that is not bureaucratic in this country? The problem is mm -hmm. we've been adding layers to the bureaucracy mm -hmm. instead of the engineering mm -hmm. um, the system. We've been compounding the, the, the problem with more layers. Mm -hmm that would uh, make it difficult, for example, for people to transact with government institutions. So it's not just peculiar to the DOJ. Mm -hmm. It's not just peculiar to the program. Everything in this country um, is, is difficult to uh, accomplish, so to speak, <laughs> because of so much red tape. Mm -hmm. Mel? Uh, well, uh, just a, a case in point. No? We have a case of Su the case of Suwaib uh, Upham, of uh, the Maguindanao Massacre witness. Mm -hmm. He was killed uh, before admission to the WPP, and uh, the Hong Kong-based group uh, Asian Legal Resource Center said uh, this is a gross failure uh, by the DOJ to respond to urgent applications. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that is pretty unfortunate because apparently in practice the DOJ would only provide protection once the application is granted. In the case of the, of, of the, the supposed state yeah. witness, I think his application was denied initially and just when the DOJ was about to reconsider. consider and uh, yes, yes reconsider mm -hmm. I think it was gone down uh, in, in broad daylight on his way to Manila mm -hmm. had the DOJ acted swiftly and promptly 
then um, you know his life could have been saved and he could have testified mm. um, in court. But again, the problem is that the law does not provide for efficient interim protection mechanism mm -hmm. because apparently the DOJ will only um, step in mm -hmm. once you are included in the program mm -hmm. and that definitely is something that should be addressed mm -hmm. because if you're a witness definitely the moment you express interest in testifying you'd like to be protected mm -hmm. so that the solution is to amend the law mm -hmm. not really to <laughs> win out amend the, the law DOJ. on the process on the Regarding the process, you mean? Yes, exactly. Um, because there are certain areas which the law has not critically addressed. And it's an old law. It's, it yes. was enacted in 1991. 1991. Mm. So, you know, I think timely amendments and revisions mm. should be introduced. You think, uh, Tony Mel, that, that the reason why that witness for the Maguindana massacre was a result of the DOJ, DOJ having the sole exclusivity or do you think it was just a question of processes, yung, yung yeah, bureaucracy, so to speak, which, and if you feel that a, a department like the Department of Justice is contributing to that uh, bureau, bureau, bureaucracy. It's because of the monopoly of the DOJ. Uh, so you think it's the monopoly? Uh, okay. If there were other choices, usually the witness could go to the other choices of uh, agencies if there was no monopoly. But as mentioned by Attorney Ed, yung, mm -hmm. if you go to the Commission on Human Rights, for example, or let's say perhaps common like, they don't have the, the budget, unlike a department, a, a whole department like the Department of Justice, they, they do have uh, the budget. No? Like, for example, if you go to the Commission on Human Rights, they have a measly sum. How do you, you might, they might act on it right away, but, uh, you know, maybe the security is not, <laughs> not there because of the, the, we're talking about the implementation side. Then I want to cite uh, Attorney Persida Acosta, okay. who, who said that her POW, Public Attorney's Office, even if it's, as, uh, inherently for the accused, no? but in, mm -hmm. in reality, they, uh, they accept uh, witnesses, uh, prosecution witnesses, because mm -hmm. of the realities that they are in the field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in, in, if you've, uh, in this situation, yeah, no? Attorney Ed yeah, said that the DOJ, really, their, their mandate is really that, no? to, to, uh, to identify witnesses, and part of, uh, you know, to prosecute. Prosecu to prosecute, yeah, to prosecute. Mm -hmm. Um, so how, how can this be passed on to, to uh, other bodies whose job is not really to prosecute? These other bodies, they will address the problems in the interim. Yes, Eventually, in the interim. Right. after securing the witness, that's the, they will pass it on to the, to the DOJ. All right. Okay, we need to take a short break. Uh, don't go away. When we come back, the results of our online poll on the issue and the final words of our guests. Stay tuned. You're watching Opposing Views. Welcome back. This is Opposing Views. I'm Rod Depomuceno. And our guests for tonight, Attorney Edward Chico and Attorney Melchor Magdamo. Our debate question for tonight, should the Department of Justice have the sole power in determining qualified applicants of the Witness Protection Program? Now, uh, Attorney Ed, is there an assurance, for example, that when we transfer, let's say, WPP applications, let's say, to the courts, uh, and you were mentioned, I'd like to expound on, what your, on your point uh, earlier. Uh, do you think this will lead to failed prosecutions? Simply lang ang punto ko eh. Ang dahilan kung bakit may mga korte para magdesisyon ng mga kaso. At sa pagkanilang pagdesisyon, kinakailangan pata sila. Mm -hmm. Eh kung sila ang magdedetermina ng kwalifikasyon ng isang testigo, hindi ba medyo magkakaroon ng problema tayo doon? Paano nila masasagawa yun? Sapagat in the process of so doing, they would be getting the testimonies of these witnesses. Mm -hmm. And I think that the job of the prosecution is precisely to identify the witnesses. It's not, for the, it's not within the province of the court to decide upon. Mm -hmm. uh, Mel, uh, your thoughts on that? The courts can only decide if the witness is still alive. In the interim, the, the courts must find a way to keep the witnesses alive so as the courts can decide the case. That's the re oh. reason why there should be at least interim prerogative on the part of the courts to, to join, to contribute in the effort. And subsequently, of they will the, be transferred to the DOJ. After securing the, the witnesses. So the so, point is initially, for example, the CHR oh. would, mm. uh, would process the application, would administer, would implement, 
and then once the witnesses are uh, determined, they will now transfer the witnesses to the DOJ so that the DOJ can present them uh, in the prosecution of cases. Is that basically what is that your attorney thesis, uh, is, is trying to or, or get across here? Not or all the all time. The way. Uh, not there was some of the witnesses do not feel comfortable with the DOJ. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, because sometimes the collab, and you have to understand the human element here, right? You're mm. you're basically becoming a witness against an institution, our body, which is the state, for example, or perhaps members of, uh, uh, I mean, officials of, of this, uh, of the state, of, or, or the administration, maybe not the state, but the administration. Um, and you're, you're, you're going against basically, the, their de you're the going to the department, yeah, you're going to the department, all right, mm. which is part of that administration. Uh, let's face it, right? like, in the case of Kunani, may I have an issue with, uh, with, with Pinoy, President uh, or Noy, or maybe his executive secretary, or, and then, and I know for a fact that every week, the Secretary of Justice, which will determine, determine my uh, application for WPP, has a, a weekly meeting with, with that person I have an issue with. So, do you think that there's something, there has to be something, uh, at least uh, in your mind, no? again, I'm playing devil's advocate here, is there something inherently wrong with that? Uh, that system. Well, I understand your concern. In fact, Rod, I couldn't agree more. But the thing is, we have to understand that under the rule of law, under existing rules, under existing laws, the DOJ ultimately will prosecute the cases. Mm -hmm. So whether or not the witnesses wouldn't want to work with the DOJ will be rendered moot and academic because ultimately, they will have to be uh, working together closely with the DOJ because the DOJ will be the ones presenting them as witnesses. So going back to what Mel was saying, if initially the CHR, for example, would process the application and subsequently will transfer the witnesses to the DOJ, aren't we being more bureaucratic in that sense? Mm -hmm. When the DOJ on its own can essentially do everything and facilitate things? That was because the CHO was deprived of budget. Mm. At this moment, there should be a separate budget for the witnesses, which mm. could go to any of the, I, the implementing agencies. But the problem, mm. Komel, what do we do now with the witnesses? Ultimately, who will present them? The DOJ. Mm. No. Yeah, yeah, but the witnesses will not cooperate if the witnesses feels that he will be dead under the, <laughs> that prosecuting arm. That's why, for example, like me, why, why would I go to the DOJ? Do yeah. uh, you so think that uh, there might be a wisdom in actually coming up with maybe a, a, a tripartite body? which includes perhaps uh, maybe uh, members of the judiciary, members of uh, the executive, and members of, for example, the legislature. Anyway, the, the state witnesses often go to the, the Senate anyway for the Senate hearings. Do you think that that's a, 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 a plausible idea? That would have been ideal, Rod, but the thing is, you're just basically adding layer to the bureaucracy. Mm. The point is, the DOJ has the mandate to prosecute cases, so we allow the DOJ to do its work. Now, if there are certain problems, it has nothing to do, those problems have nothing to do with the DOJ. As I said, there are certain provisions that need timely amendments and revisions. Why don't we revise them? Yeah. Number one, provide a sufficient budget. Number two, introduce provisions that will um, that will prevent the president from <laughs> politicizing the process. I really don't know well, how we can accomplish that, but probably yeah. Congress can come up with some provisions uh, towards that end. Number three, why couldn't we take care of the apparent weak support system granted to our witnesses? Why couldn't we, for example, vigorously engage the participation of the police or even the NBI yeah, I was gonna, I was ask that. to provide for protection? If we can police do those is, things, uh, then mm. there would not be any problem. I can understand the concern of Mel. The problem is it's not the fault of the DOJ. It's the fault of how our leaders are running the system. Mm. So should we with them out? So, you know, 2016 is just uh, around the corner, so probably we should elect wisely mm. this time. Uh, Attorney Mel, uh, your thoughts on that? Uh, perhaps the, maybe the police, no? The police might be... Uh, because be, I think the first concern of a, a person, it's not so much the education of his kids, yeah. which is part of the Witness Protection yes. Program benefits. It's not so much the livelihood, niya, the yes. fact that he's not demote. The very first concern is really security, security. right? Security. So, uh, can, for example, in, in this scenario, uh, let's say it remains in the DOJ, but there's a mechanism which automatically provides for 
security. The DOJ has a mechanism that kaka apply mo palang meron ng security system. Would you uh, be ready to concede at least that in that kind of a scenario, the DOJ can have the sole authority or hindi pala? Uh, the DOJ promised that way back in 2011. That mm. I don't know why uh, why it doesn't seem to be implemented. <laughs> Until now, there's I don't see much implementation of their mm. promise way back uh, 2011. Mm. Huh? Well, Attorney Ed, uh, I, I, well, I like your point that you brought up. What, what if we involve, let's say, NBI or police here? Uh, Actually, the DOJ can do that because under the law, the DOJ can engage the assistance of other agencies. In fact, if the DOJ so wants, it could mm. also perhaps ask assistance from the CHR. Mm. So the law is... Um, allows the DOJ to seek help. So it's not true that the DOJ um, would, would just monopolize the, the, pro, the, the, the implementation of the program. The DOJ can, and can ask assistance. Do you think that we can't avoid uh, the bureaucracy? Because there are obviously some people who will probably try to abuse this. Because, wow, okay, to, I, I'll have livelihood. I have 12000 a month. I have, uh, yun, I'll, I'll probably uh, I'll be protected all the time. Um, so, do you think that uh, you know a situation like that can can be abused, and that's the reason why there is bureaucracy? Because obviously the DOJ will have to find out if if there was indeed uh, you know what what's the nature of the case. Because in in determining whether you're qualified or disqualified for the WPP, there is some kind of judicial uh, evaluation, right? You have to determine yes. you have to determine whether uh, his testimony can be corroborated uh, uh, in material points, etc. You think that uh, I guess what I, my, my question is: Do you think that it, the bureaucracy cannot be avoided? Well, to begin with, Rod, there is red tape because there is corruption, hmm. and corruption in this country apparently is a culture. Hmm. So that's another story. Yeah, another story but okay. with respect to what the DOJ is doing, definitely they have to streamline the process because there are ways of doing things. Um, where they could still get the desired result. Mm -hmm. Of course, the DOJ should be careful in, in screening the applicants. They should exercise caveat in so far as determining whether yeah. or not certain witnesses should be included in the program. But when they do that, they have to really come up with an um, effective uh, scheme whereby they can facilitate the processing. Mm -hmm. Do you think, though, if... Uh do you think, though, if it's a, a case against the state, you know, uh, against our, our, our members of the administration, for example, especially, uh, do you think that it, it's more appropriate that it should be filed, the WPP application, in, in the ombuds, ombudsman? It depends also. It really depends on the witness, eh, on uh, to whom mm. the witness will repose his or her trust. Mm. Uh, because if it's against uh, the powerful, those who are close to the president or, or the president himself, eh, well, well, the Ombudsman is supposed to be an independent body altogether, right? Yes. So it's not under the, at least uh, we can say that that's not part of the executive branch. The Ombudsman right. enjoys a little bit more independence because uh, the Ombudsman has a term that is, mm. that, uh, that is longer than the term of the Right. The, 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 uh, attorney, Ed, uh, uh, well, point. If, you think if, that if the Ombudsman is independent as you claim it, Mel, mm. so how come the Ombudsman is also zeroing in on the three senators? and not zeroing in on the uh, supposed cases against some of the president's men. Hmm. So, there so, is, there, so whether it's DOJ, whether it's Ombudsman... Exactly, that's the point. That, uh, so we so. elect a good president, someone who would take mm -hmm. care of us, someone who would protect our All interest. Right. That is the solution. Oh, may, may, may political campaign. Ka na. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we've reached the final point. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, one hour is not enough. Uh, so uh, I'd like to get your, your final words, no? your final comments. Uh, Attorney Ed, your final words on, on this uh, debate question. Well, I think people should always be vigilant. If there are wrongdoings, then we should not be afraid to speak up and articulate our concerns. And because that is the only way we can actually get across our sentiment, and that is the only way we can tell our president that he is uh, overstepping mm -hmm. and that he is committing abuses and that he is doing things which are not in accordance with what he's supposed to do as president. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, it's the people mm -hmm. who, who matter, mm -hmm. but the public, us, you know, mm -hmm. all of us, uh, we, we matter and we should be able to be vigilant and we should be able to 
um, always ano ba sa Tagalog Be, yung well, well, hold them accountable ang nakikialam oh. at uh, nakikibahagi well, sa panagoy ng bayan so whether kung DOJ Solian or any other ano oh, it should be, it should uh, be exactly that, so that the DOJ should you know we should not uh, deprive the DOJ of doing what it's supposed to do under the law all right uh, Tony Mel your final words Monopoly has always been a problem and has been the cause of numerous problems. If you shatter the monopoly, that will be for the benefit of many. Mm -hmm. That's why, at least, in witness protection, it should not be a monopoly of the DOJ. The DOJ may go ahead do it, whatever it has been doing, but allow also the others who have been doing their own witness protection program, why abolish the others and monopolize the DOJ, especially now that the DOJ has proven itself very highly political in All the right. last few all right, thank you very much, Tony yes. Mel. Well, we can agree to disagree, but at least, you know, one thing, you were both members of the same band, so yes. at least you can agree on that. Maybe you can jam si on one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks to our guests, Attorney Edward Chico and Attorney Melchor Magdamo, former band members, and now uh, having opposing views. Now let's feel uh, the pulse of our viewers through our online poll. Our question for tonight, should the Department of Justice have the sole power in determining qualified applicants for the Witness Protection Program? Those who answered yes, 40% and those who answered no, 60%. And that's our opposing views for tonight. Tune in again next week for another bold and engaging discussion on today's most relevant issues. I'm Rod Pumuseno. Good night. God bless. Happy weekend.